Welcome, welcome everybody. Lots of folks starting to stream in. Thank you so much for spending a little time with us. I'll let a few more people get admitted here. We had a great showing in terms of registration for this event. So we are excited. Um, so I wanna say good morning to everybody that's here. Thanks for being on time. Um, happy fall. I do wanna welcome you to the very first meeting of the Local Energy Resources Network, which we are referring to as learn meetings because we're gonna to learn together. Um, I do wanna invite folks to put on your webcam if you're comfortable doing so, because these meetings are intended to be an interactive roundtable among peers. So while we don't have time in this short hour to do introductions with all the folks that are gonna come, I do wanna invite everybody to take a moment to introduce yourself in the chat while we get started. And just a reminder that the slides and the recording for this meeting uh, will be distributed after today's meeting. So don't feel stressed out about getting everything down. All right, next slide, please. So I'll start. I'm Angie Hacker, I'm the SEEK Statewide Best Practices Coordinator. Um, I'm actually based in Carpinteria, California on Chumash ancestral lands. And today I am also joined by lots of members of the SEEK team um, that I wanna make sure you're starting to get to know. So we've got Ryan, Gabby, John, and Kelsey. And I wanna make sure that um, folks wave and give you a little hello in the, uh, in the chat box as well. And the SEEK team and I, designed this new meeting series because we wanted to create a regular space for local governments and those that work with them to help each other learn about opportunities to advance their energy and climate goals. So as a former sustainability division chief myself within a local government, I know firsthand that it's really hard to keep up with all the news, the best practices, the opportunities in our industry, especially right now. And so I'm hoping this one hour, spending this one hour together is gonna to be an efficient and useful investment of your time. You can get in the know, stay in the know, and then get back to work, pushing all of your initiatives forward. So um, we really see these meetings as a two-way conversation with local practitioners like you and partner agencies um, who are often seeking to better support local governments with their programs. So today's discussion is gonna be focused on California Air Resources Board um, and how, how CARB and local governments can work together to advance climate action. We're very lucky to be joined by two representatives from different branches at CARB, and I'm gonna introduce them in just a moment, but I wanna say this discussion is obviously really good timing. We wanted to kick it off with a bang here. We've got wild, I've got a wildfire right above me um, in the Santa Barbara area. There's the new IPCC report. There's greater urgency around the state and federal governments around climate change. So unlocking local potential to reduce emissions seems to me more critical than ever. So I really wanna say thank you for being here. Next slide, please. Um, a quick promo, just because I think a lot of you know us from the SEEK Forum, and thank you for participating in that, but we do a lot more through the SEEK program. So just to help you better understand it, you know, SEEK is a program that's actually overseen by the Local Government Commission. We are funded by BayREN, SoCalREN, 3CREN, and other sponsors, and our whole goal is to advance knowledge amongst uh, California local governments and the folks that work with them to help you pursue your energy and climate goals. And that means that we are offering a lot of different services, including uh, news and events. We offer technical assistance. We offer, uh, we are looking at best practices. We're taking inventory, sharing and distributing best practices. And we're also distributing, compiling funding resources. So we're trying to really arm the folks uh, like you on the ground to lift off whatever burden we can from you and help arm you to do the work that you're doing. All right, next slide, please. All right, so one of the first things we wanna do in these meetings is start with um, our first sort of opportunity to have an interactive round table. Um, so this is going to be um, a chance for all of us to do some round table sharing about what we know. So I've got a few opportunities I wanna highlight um, for you. So these are opportunities that I think specifically folks working in or with local governments um, could benefit from knowing about. And I'm hoping that as we're talking, you can add anything you'd like others um, you know, in your position to be aware of and just add that to the chat. You can have a couple of lines, a link, 
Um, this is gonna help your peers and help, it's also gonna help us at Seek better populate our weekly and our all of our databases. Um, so you can share, it could be a funding opportunity, a technical assistance opportunity, a, a new program, a training, an event, um, help each other out. So let me go ahead and just tell you a little bit about what I know. Um, so I'm looking kind of big, big picture I'm trying to keep track of what's going on and a big picture statement is to say that right now a lot I'm seeing a lot of federal programs that have received lo some level of infusion um, out of the stimulus out of ARPA that um, may not be obviously right in the wheelhouse of clean energy or climate change but are certainly tied to it and you might have to dig a little into the solicitations to find that link but once you do you realize that um, most programs are weaving climate action into things that don't sound like climate action, like economic development, water, um, and emergency planning or emergency uh, management. And so there's three opportunities that are active right now that I wanna make sure you're aware of. And John, thank you for continuously adding links into the chat so you can dive into it. So there's the economic development, the EDA uh, Build Back Better Regional Challenge. That is due next week. It's a big one. Phase one is 500,000, phase two is like multiple tens of millions potentially. So it's a regional opportunity to do economic development, but they do want that to see things tied to, to climate um, and resilience in terms of projects. So if you can turn projects that you're working on into something that also uh, has economic outputs and outcomes like wage increases, jobs, um, GDP, then, it's a really good idea to keep your eye on the EDA programs in general um, and, and sort of tailor what you're doing into, into economic development. Um, I am gonna spend on the next slide, each month I'm gonna spend time going over one opportunity in a little more detail. So we're gonna talk about FEMA BRIC next, um, but just to give you a little bit more overview. Um, so we'll talk about funding, but we also wanna bring forth some other types of assistance like the two that I have here. So DOE has two opportunities. One of them is a collaboration with NREL and they developed a solar app plus app. So it's a free tool that um, was actually released by the DOE just this summer. Um, Secretary uh, Granholm, she challenged jurisdictions to sign up and register for this thing. So they've surpassed their goal. Over 125 jurisdictions have already signed up. And the goal of it is it's a free piece of software to help cities and counties with their permitting um, around solar. So trying to unlock solar potential through easier permitting. So if that's something you're working on, if you want access to a free DOE tool, I wanted to make sure you were aware of it. Um, also, the DOE last month just launched an opportunity announcement called Leap Community Leap. And it's an initiative designed to help environmental justice communities and communities with historical ties to fossil fuel industries take control of their clean energy future. So long story short, it looks to me like a technical assistance opportunity and it's specifically geared towards low income energy burdened communities. <clears throat> so right now there's two opportunities. One is to comment on it. Um, and that opportunity, uh, let's see here is, um, I gotta get rid of my chat here. Okay, that opportunity um, is ending today. <laughs> so, um, but if you do have any, if you've looked at it, if you wanna look at it, the links, um, John's sharing the link right now. Um, they're gonna take that feedback and construct an actual solicitation so you can apply to be part of that program and receive what seems to be very valuable technical assistance. Um, and that you would have an app, uh, ability to apply for by December 17th. So you got some time there. And then the third thing I want to mention here, so under input, so we've mentioned the community leap, there's an opportunity for input there that I'm really sort of getting passionate about this because I think there's so many opportunities for local governments and folks like you to be providing input, even though, gosh, it's like a rainstorm, it's a snowstorm. There's so many, there's maybe too many, but I want to raise them up because I, I, I want to make sure that this, everybody's aware that there's an opportunity to bend programs in the right direction here if, if we can. Um, so there's another one that USDA has an opportunity. Um, they are looking for people to apply to be part of their equity commission. So if that's something, um, thanks John for that link. If that's something that you're interested in, that application is due on the 27th of this month. And also just mentioning that CARB has a workshop on the 19th of this month uh, on something called the 2022 State 
uh, implementation plan strategy draft measures. Um, and so if that's something that you're eyeing, just make sure that you're aware that there is a workshop for, and uh, ability for public comment. And then the last thing I'll mention here is just on the horizon. So, you know, lots of federal funding opportunities right now. And of course, you know that the state just passed its $15 billion budget. Lots in there for local governments, lots in there for energy and climate. Here's some of the programs and how much they were funded. So this all has to go through its machinations um, in terms of like going through uh, maybe scoping and program design and solicitation development. And as we learn and more things, we'll keep you abreast of opportunities to either provide input or to apply. And if you want more information about any of these, we really recommend that you check out our recent policymakers event where we had Eric DeCock from OPR present um, high level on all of the opportunities and how they might translate to local opportunities. All right, next slide, please. Oh, actually, before we move on, uh, I do hope folks mentioned anything in the chat and I wanted to leave a little minute open here in case anybody wanted to share anything out loud, any opportunities that you want others to know about. So just know if you're not ready today, you can bring them next time. Um, and you can throw them in the chat or you can say them out loud. I do have one that I would Great. like to promote. So the Local Government Sustainable Energy Coalition, LGSEC, is having a forum that is open to the public and tickets for non-members are $10 and we will be having some commissioners um, from the CPUC and we will also be having, um, ex well, just recently, um, Heidi Harmon, so um, the past mayor of San Luis Obispo. So I think it's a great event. And once I'm done with all this, I'll be sure to leave the link in the chat. So you can all register if you're interested. It's on empowering local governments um, on how to just collaborate um, in the field of climate and energy. Thank you. That was Gabby from the SEEK program. Really appreciate it. And appreciate those of you that have added something to the chat. Yes, fire hose, um, but this is intended to be the Cliff Notes version of everything you need to know. And uh, like I said, don't worry, the links will be sent afterwards as well. Next slide, please. So one little spotlight here, I wanna spend some time on, on FEMA. Most of you probably are not emergency management folks, but it might be time to make friends with the emergency management folks. Um, who are probably This is probably in their wheelhouse, but um, if it were me sitting in a local government right now, um, I would offer to help because uh, FEMA is definitely interested in doing more to support climate change, climate adaptation resilience. Um, and so I wanted to make sure this is on your radar. The uh, federal government has a deadline in January, but if you are a local government, you are actually eligible to be a sub applicant under Cal OES. Um, so Cal, o Cal OES has to be the applicant um, for California for the BRIC application. So that deadline is um, December 1st, uh, 2021. So there is some time. The period of performance, if it is awarded, is 36 months. A maximum, actually, that's a typo. Max per project is actually 50 million. Um, so these are these are large scale projects, um, and I would say if you're a, a jurisdiction working specifically on things like energy resilience, this might be a real opportunity. Um, and so here you've got you know some requirements, some priorities. I just sort of pulled out what, what I thought were some of the key things. Like there is a match requirement, um, and there is definitely highlights on climate action, climate resilience and adaptation. So it isn't a subtopic, it's they want to see, um, they wanna see that this is going to build resilience. Okay, um, so again, those links are gonna be provided. And um, I do wanna mention one more thing here, and that is that you can submit a letter of interest for direct technical assistance to FEMA for this opportunity at the email address that's linked here. Okay, with that, um, okay, now it's time for our speakers, and we're so fortunate to be joined here by two uh, representatives from CARB. Um, first up, I'm going to introduce Christina Echevera. She is an air pollution specialist in the Climate Investments Branch of CARB's Sustainable Transportation and Communities Division. Christina leads outreach and engagement for California Climate Investments and works to develop stakeholder-informed infrastructure and resources that can help the public better access investment programs. So um, with that, I'm gonna leave it up to Christina and then uh, she's gonna talk to you 
for about nine minutes. Then we're going to do Q and A, like a discussion. So be prepared for a little interaction, um, and then we'll move on and we'll talk to Neil Matuka. So go ahead, Christina. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for letting me talk at you for nine minutes, and then hopefully engaging with me for another few. Um, so. Uh, as Angie mentioned, my name is Cristina Cheverria. I work at the Climate Investments Branch in Cal at the California Air Resources Board. Um, so can I get the next slide? So for this presentation, I want to begin with a quick overview of what California Climate Investments is, talk you through some of the key resources for determining if any of our programs are a good fit for you, and then open the space up to a little bit of discussion where we can, you can ask me questions and I also have a few questions for you. Next slide. Okay, so let's start with some quick background. Next. Next slide. Yeah. California Climate Investments is a statewide initiative that puts billions of cap and trade dollars to work. Um, and we do that by reducing greenhouse gases, strengthening the economy, improving public health and the environment, and particularly in disadvantaged communities. The cap and trade program also creates a financial incentive for industries to invest in clean technologies and develop innovative ways to reduce pollution. Next slide. So each year through the annual budget process, the legislature appropriates this funding to over 20 state agencies, which are shown here. And those state agencies then go on to administer over 40 programs. And these programs all fund a wide range of projects designed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and support a wide range of environmental, economic, public health, and equity goals. Each agency designs their own programs and in accordance with the statute and CARB's funding guidelines, they implement those programs. So examples of project types include zero emission vehicles and equipment, transit and active transportation, affordable housing, urban greening, renewable energy, energy efficiency, recycling, composting, forest health, fire prevention. In short, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and state agencies have to date implemented $9 billion of implemented projects. And Angie actually just mentioned some of our programs to you all. And so on that little spotlight that she did on the sidebar, she mentioned transformative climate communities, low income weatherization and urban greening. So those are all Cal California climate investments programs. Can I get the next slide? So this slide hi highlights what, um, what our programs have able, been able to accomplish up to this point, and some of the benefits that we estimate um, that have resulted from that $9 billion investment. Um, a few examples are that we funded over 740 transit projects. We've installed energy, in, energy efficiency measures in over 123,000 homes and much, much more. And you can see that 51% of our funding has benefited priority populations. Our statute is to have 35% of that funding benefit priority populations. And we consistently shoot to be overachievers in that realm um, because that's where a lot of resources are needed. So next slide. So with so many programs offered, it can be really hard to determine what funding opportunities are right for you. Um, so next I wanna talk you through some key resources that um, local governments can use in exploring this super wide breadth of opportunities and see what makes sense in your area. Um, and then I've hyperlinked everything as much as possible. Oh, next slide is fine. Um, hyperlinked everything as much as possible to ideally make it easy for folks to then be able to access all of this information. So right off the bat, the place, best place to learn about all of the things California Climate Investments is on our website. Um, so that's caclimateinvestments.ca.gov. And I'm gonna go over some of the relevant resources on our website. Um, and like I said, a lot of these are hyperlinked throughout. So one, we've organized our website by audience, which means that you can go to our website, hit programs, and there will be an option that says for local governments. And you can click that and what you'll get is the listing of all of our programs for which you would all be eligible applicants. Um, and from there, we'll, you'll be able to read more about these programs and learn you know, high level, what do they do? And we try to help then direct you to the appropriate place to get a little bit more in-depth information. So this is also a really great way to point members of the community. So if you ever have you know, 
local businesses or nonprofits in your area that are asking you about opportunities, you can click programs, go to that audience and direct them there also. Um, so if it's ever, you know, a situation where you just wanna be able to point someone else to resources, we've got you covered. Um, so when you visit the page for local governments, you're gonna see a few key resources up at the top. One is a fact sheet that's available in English and Spanish. And this is a printout of the programs that CCI offers that um, are open to local governments. And this is just a convenient piece of paper that you can then print and have on your desk and um, distribute to folks. The next thing that we link to is um, a webinar that we hosted last fall that was specifically on funding for local governments. So this webinar highlighted funding opportunities that were upcoming at the time in fall 2020, but we found that these slides have actually been useful to a lot of folks in getting a really concise overview of a lot of our programs. And so a lot of folks have still been looking at the slides to get a sense of, you know, does this program offer TA? Generally, what are the funding amounts that are involved in this program? Um, where is the best place to sign up for updates? That's all listed in the slide. So I really encourage you to check those out. And there's also a recording where we have presentations on our boost program, as well as an example of an HSC award, the Affordable Housing and Sustainable Communities Award that was um, funded to the city of Arcata in collaboration with the Yurok tribe. So those will be up at the top. And then every program that you see will link out to a program page. And that program page will then give you a high level overview of the program and tell you exactly where to go next. So it'll say, if you wanna now visit the program website and get a little bit more into the nuts and bolts of it all, it'll take you to that appropriate website. So this is really the one place that you can go to explore and then dive deeper wherever you see fit. Wherever you see fit. Um, next slide. So in addition to helping folks navigate the funding opportunities they're eligible for, eligible for we also provide resources um, so that potential applicants can learn about funded projects, including um, updates on implementation and benefits milestones of those projects and the presence of California climate investments in their area. And so we, we catalog our profiles as results because ultimately this is what we mean when we say we want sustainable communities. We want um, projects to really have tangible benefits within the communities that are hosting them. And so sometimes we've noticed that a lot of folks they'll see these programs, but they don't really know what a project might look like. And these stories are help are there to help build that bridge. They're there to help really share the great work that are that is being done by these projects, but also give folks a sense of the creativity that a lot of areas in the state are approaching these programs with. So a few more resources here. There's a project map. You can check out. Um, um, you can check out where implement where investments have gone so far. So you can see if there's any investments near you. Um, we, like I mentioned in our outcomes, we really think about priority populations. So I've linked here how you can learn how we determine priority populations, as well as a map that lets you see whether the location that you are in qualifies as disadvantaged or low-income community. So that'll let you know whether you fall under that window of priority populations that we prioritize. Uh, next slide. Okay. So what comes next after those resources? Maybe you explored the programs, you have a sense of what funding opportunities we provide that might be of interest to you. You have two or three that are of interest. Next, you start to plan. Um, and something that we've really seen is that some of our best projects really come through partnerships um, because the projects end up with a, a much more diverse perspective to you know what solutions will be beneficial to a particular community. We get a lot more nuance. And so we do really encourage partnerships in our applications and we launch community connections to help with that. So community connections shown here is a directory where organizations and agencies can find partners interested in California climate investments. So these are folks that know what California climate investments is and are open to being reached out to for collaboration. And we encourage folks to sign up for the directory, but also use the directory to help build some of those connections for any programs that you might be interested in. Next slide. Okay, so in addition to connecting to partners, we want you to connect with us. So we have a few platforms to be able to do that. 
Um, first is our newsletter and social media. They advertise a lot of funding opportunities that are coming up. And so this is a great way to have it on your radar. If you know what program you're looking at for, you can kind of scroll through and see is, you know, is there any updates on that program? Um, I've created a hyperlink here where you can click and just subscribe. But also if anybody wants to be subscribed today, please feel free to throw your email address into the chat and I'll make sure you get added so that there's no further action needed from you. Um, but that is a great way to get um, updated. You can also ask us questions directly. So here's our email address, here's our phone number. Um, it is a bilingual line. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, sometimes we will even have folks reaching out and saying like, hey, I want to do something like this, but I'm not sure if anything really fits that. Can you like help guide me? And we will do everything we can to help guide you in the right direction or connect you directly to a program staff that, um, that might be able to better answer your questions. Okay. Um, I also would like to mention that a great place to find out about funding opportunities that are currently available is over on the funding wizard, which Neil would, will describe in a second. So I encourage you to pay extra attention to Neil's presentation. Um, so next slide. Okay, so with that said, I wanna take time and answer any questions that you all might have. I know I throw a lot of resources at you. Everything is hyperlinked for easy finding, but there's always room to fill. So um, any questions before I jump into some of the questions I wanted to discuss with you all? I think I see Nick with a hand up. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm with Albany, California, which is uh, kind of an interesting city and in a lot of, a portion of it is pretty affluent. And then there's another portion that is more um, rental, multifamily housing oh. occupants that is probably not as organized, not as uh, participatory. And um, that's what we're trying to focus on and, and providing incentives and, and you know, methods for them to become more, um, to pollute less and to take advantage of some of these funding opportunities. What, what um, you know, Albany is a pretty small town, what granularity do these maps give as far as, do, do they go down to the census uh, level? and identify areas in your city that would qualify for disadvantaged? Or how could we get a, a better handle on that? Um, yes, so they are down to the, um, the census track level for a lot of our projects. A lot of our projects will report slightly differently. Um, and so some projects will cover like a much wider range of area. It really depends on, um, on the project that you're looking at. Um, so I'd encourage you kind of explore what's a good fit and see how that matches up with the map data. But if you ever want more specific information, we can help round that up for you. Yeah, and as kind of a follow-up, when you, in doing applications for this, it, it, it's important to say what uh, area of the population we're targeting, I gather, and mm -hmm. have an actual plan that reinforces that, not just citywide. Is that yeah. correct? Yes, okay. precisely. Thanks. Now, on a related topic, Christina, we've got a question in the chat from Susan Wright, who said, I noticed that Cal Enviro Screen Map has a draft 4.0 version, and she's asking, when will the 4.0 version be finalized? Yes. So I, I don't work on Cal Enviro Screen, so I can't give you an official date, but I know that it is supposed to be soon. Um, but I, I wouldn't be the right person to ask. However, if you'd like me to dig around, I can always follow up. Great. At the SEEK program, we're doing a little bit of um, analysis on DAC communities, and I feel like we might be able to provide some help here to local governments as well. So um, maybe we talk offline about that, Christina. Um, all right. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Um, so then can we go on to the next slide? Sure. We just got two minutes before I got to pass it off to Neil, but yes, please do. Sure. Um, so we just kind of want to highlight that we're always looking to figure out how we can do better outreach and engagement and serve all of California a little bit better. And so we always want to explore new approaches to outreach, understanding barriers, and learning what folks need from us. So next slide. The questions I have for you all today, and feel free to just drop them in the slide even, um, even like to the end of this meeting, and I'm happy to hear it but otherwise feel free to unmute if anybody has a couple quick thoughts. Um, 
how can our information be more accessible to you? And what forms of engagement would you like to see California Climate Investments explored in order to be able to reach you a little bit better? And then also, what are some challenges or barriers that your community is facing or common challenges that you and your peers are experiencing that um, you would really like us to know about and be able to incorporate into our work? So I'll let folks unmute if you have any thoughts, um, but otherwise feel free to drop them in the chat. Well, I'll, I'll jump in on that. This is Nick Peterson again. I, you know, I see a lot of local governments doing redundant activities, setting up their own websites, you know, setting up their own climate action plans, spending huge amounts of staff time, of which are very limited, and doing kind of parallel work, in, almost in isolation. It should be great to have a, a state-run uh, reference site that we could just put a link to. And then that would keep, you know, the state with its resources would keep up all this kind of information you're presenting today rather than every little individual local government having to do that. And I know there's some, there's some efforts to uh, have um, like utility data, uh, you know, sort of aggregated and, and available in those kind of location stuff. And I know there are a lot of hurdles on that, but I just, I just see other, I'm involved with another group through the Climate Center where we're trying to help one another out, but everyone's doing, you know, spinning wheels, doing the same thing. And I just get concerned that with limited staff trying to make, you know, make headway, especially on outreach and engagement, which is a huge hurdle um, for small cities. They don't have a lot of staff to do that. So if, if there could be a more state central clearinghouse of that type of information, that would be great. Okay. That's really Thank good. you, Nick. Um, there was one more comment in the chat, and then we'll move to Neil. And, um, Elliot uh, Wieserek says, I just want to give kudos to CARB for their thorough documentation of CCI strategy quantification methodologies. It's a great resource. Thank you. Always good to give kudos. Um, and I want to say thank you so much to Christina. Like she said, she is available, and you can continue to help her um, provide some feedback on those questions in the chat as we continue along here. Christina, let's um, let's continue the conversation. I'm hearing all sorts of ways that even SEEK could provide some support here for local governments and making things sort of easier to consume and, and try to reduce some redundancy. Absolutely. Thank you all for having me. And as Angie said, please feel free to reach out anytime. All right. Thanks so much. Okay, so let me go ahead and introduce our next speaker. Neil Matuka um, is an air pollution specialist in the emergency, Emerging Strategies section of CARB's Sustainable Transportation and Communities Division. And in his role, Neil works with communities across California to support local government climate action planning, climate mitigation policy implementation, and research to develop statewide tracking frameworks and insights into effective climate action. So a different branch, but actually very uh, relevant to what Nick was just talking about. I'm excited to hear what you have to say, Neil. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Angie. Uh, very excited to, to be back with, uh, with SEEK and talk a little bit about the resources that CARB has to bring to bear on, on, on climate action and climate action planning. Um, so uh, next slide, please. I'd just like to start off at um, at the 30,000 foot view real quick. Um, CARB, uh, California Resources Board, is a lead agency for climate change programs and oversees all air pollution control efforts in California to attain and maintain health-based air quality standards. This means that it is our job to help the state and local and regional jurisdictions to take meaningful action that is tied to science-based targets and programs. Uh, the next scoping plan for 2022 um, will actually look at carbon neutrality and, and how to get there. Next slide. One of the most common questions that we get around CAP development is, is exactly what are the state's climate goals or what targets should we use? Uh, so we put together a table that highlights some of the key high-level legislation, executive orders, and regulations that are guiding the state's pathway and provide a good framework for interested jurisdictions. Now, uh, a quick caveat, this table is not exhaustive or, or comprehensive. I mean, in the interest of fitting everything on a slide, uh, we had to abbreviate the key policies and, and not include some others. Um, but think this gives a, a, a very high-level view of uh, what we're looking at 
um, from, from the state perspective. Next slide, please. But we believe that local jurisdictions have an important role to play in climate action. Uh, local and regional jurisdictions already cover the majority of the state's population with their caps. And we see key sectors where emission reductions will not come from state action alone. We need local and regional stakeholders to help. And you'll see that I've identified three, uh, four primary areas um, in the emissions by sector. Um, and that's an industrial, transportation, commercial, residential, and high global warming potential. So those are really the areas where local, local and regional jurisdictions uh, we feel have uh, have a role to play either because of their unique uh, jurisdiction, uh, such as land use, um, or the, the, the supporting role, things like transportation. Um, the state has zero emission vehicle mandates and targets, but we're not going to get there if local jurisdictions don't, don't help us. You know, we can't control permitting um, or where that infrastructure goes. So that's where a lot of those targets will be supported by, by state actions and, and hopefully more, we'll see more funding there. But it'll be up to the local jurisdictions to make sure that they're, they're planning for the right level of um, you know, EV charging, for example. Next slide, please. In order to, to help promote climate action, CARB has developed a number of resources I'd like to go through with you today. Uh, the first is coolcalifornia.org. Uh, this is a suite of resources as well as its own website. Cool California's goal is to be the one-stop shop for all Californians to take meaningful action on climate change. For local governments, we have a climate action planning development toolkit and guidance, strategy guidance and policy calculators, as well as we'll get to a little bit later, but our climate action planning map. Next slide, please. I wanted to very quickly highlight uh, this tool. This is a more recent addition uh, to a cool California. Um, <clears throat> This is our California Local Government Climate Policy Tool, which was developed by UC Berkeley's Chris Jones. It helps jurisdictions estimate the impact policies uh, of impact of policies based on a variety of adoption scenarios. So it's actually an interactive calculator that when you're on the site, you'll be able to scroll down and you'll see different policies such as electric vehicle adoption. And you can, you can slide the adoption scale up and down to estimate you know, 50%, 75% adoption and see how that would impact the, the emissions or emission reductions in your specific jurisdiction. And you can select um, any county, city, zip code or, or block group uh, in the state of California. And this will allow you to, to look at those emission reductions. Next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> Second resource I'd like to highlight is our climate action portal map. Uh, the CAP map, as we call it, is an interactive GIS map that shows the CAP and CAP related plans across the state of California. Users can search, filter, and browse by strategy, plan type, jurisdiction size, and demographic information. So uh, we keep this as up to date as we can. Um, you know, but it really gives you the ability to look through the state of California, see which jurisdictions have plans, have inventories, um, and actually dive down into the strategies that are in that plan. So you can say, you know, if I'm uh, if I'm a small town and I'm, I'm looking for uh, other jurisdictions of a similar size, I want to see what actions they've taken. That gives me the ability to to filter by population, for example and then find the strategies that address the, the areas that I've determined that I want to take action on as well. Next slide, please. And lastly, but, but not least, um, as Christina mentioned, um, is our recently relaunched Funding Wizard website. Um, so if you've been around this, uh, if you've been around this uh, uh, energy sector for a while. Uh, we've, been, we've been pushing the funding wizard. This is our, our second version of the funding wizard. Um, and what it, the funding wizard is, is a, is a searchable database of uh, sustainability related funding opportunities uh, specific to the state of California. So 
what we do is uh, we pull from grants.gov, we pull from the desire database, uh, we pull from CCI, we pull from as, as many different places we can, including the utilities and, and regional agencies, and make those available in the funding wizard. So we have this, uh, our, our latest update is this search box in the middle of the website. You can search by jurisdiction, by zip code, by name of funding type, by technology you're looking for. And it'll let you then use a, a, a set of filters to identify what is applicable to you or, or your, your constituents. Um, and you can just see them popping up along the bottom of, of the screen there. Also, we have a, a set of audiences that are uh, aligned with CCIs. So you're able to just click on the icon for say local government, individual household or school, for example, uh, or tribal organization. And that takes you to a pre-filtered uh, pre list of results. So you can start anywhere you'd like and hopefully help you find sustainability funding. Next slide, please. Now, PARB has a, a ton of other resources as well. Um, I wanted to highlight a couple that aren't in Cool California. <clears throat> we have uh, the CARB program page for local government climate action. Uh, so that's where you'll find uh, links to a number of our resources. We'll be including new, new research there. Um, you'll also see the Building Decarbonization Program page. That links to the latest reports uh, that, that CARB has funded, as well as the Cal Green Code um, recommendations and, and updates in that code cycle. Um, the 2017 scoping plan is available. Um, it will be, we're working on the 2022 scoping plan. Um, so you can find information about the 2017 scoping plan and the upcoming uh, revised 2022 scoping plan. It was also the process there if you wanna participate, which I highly encourage. Um, and lastly, um, our, our transportation and land use policy briefs. This is a page that has information on the strategies, policies, all the best research that we have in, in a, a, you know, a, a four to five page format per type of strategy um, developed by researchers from the UC system that really provides a digestible and easy to find format um, for most of the information that you wanna know about these types of policies. Um, the current crop that is up there is a little bit older, um, but we're going through the process right now to, to come up with revised versions, um, and those should be available in the next year or so. Um, but having said that, most of the research there still is, is, is up to date and represents our, our best available science. Next slide, please. So I want to highlight a couple of different opportunities. Um, well, what's next and, and, and how can you all participate? So as I mentioned, uh, CARB is going through the process to create the 2022 scoping plan. Uh, this will include a local actions appendix. Um, I encourage you to participate in the public meetings. There's, a, there's an ongoing workshop series um, to participate in that. Please look those up. They should be at the, at the scoping plan link. Um, as well as our new division, the Sustainable Transportation Communities Division, will be doing outreach and capacity building uh, around climate action, but in a broader sense, more outreach to communities. So look forward to, to those opportunities. Uh, they'll potentially be regional and local meetings, um, but just be on the lookout for that. We'll be publishing that uh, through the usual channels, but also through the Cool California. Um, and there will be new resources on climate action planning. Um, where and when those will be released um, is, is yet to be determined, but we would either anticipate that that's uh, coming through the local actions appendix or through Cool California itself. Next slide, please. And I wanted to, to you know, just reiterate, check out these, these websites. We have a lot of great resources, um, but if you have questions, uh, I am here to, to answer as many as I can to point to our resources um, and just, just be available as a liaison um, for stakeholders and local jurisdictions, uh, specifically on climate action planning. But if you have other questions, um, reach out and, and I'll try to find the right person. Thank you.
You know, thank you so much. That was a lot of great information. Um, we do have one question that came through the chat from Omari. Um, he is asking, what is the process used to update the cat map? A lot of existing inventories are currently not included in the map. Yeah, there, there's a couple of ways. One is that we're developing a process to do a, a full update to the whole cat map, and that just takes time and money. Um, but the other, if you if you have a specific inventory or a plan that's not in there, uh, just send me an email and, and I can put that in there. There's also a survey um, on the cat map um, and, you know, but you can just do either survey or email me. And what a good resource. Um, there's another question uh, from Elliot this time. Can you speak to what the local actions appendix will likely include? Same goes for the upcoming cap resources. Um, I, I can't at this point because we haven't finalized anything, um, that that's not internal. Um, you know, what I can say is it's, it's, um, we're, we're trying to address the questions that we received on the previous local actions appendix. Okay. Um, I don't see any hands raised. Um, so, you know, one thing I do want to mention, you know, there's a lot of local governments that have been thinking about their wish list of what they wish the state could do to support their climate action planning, um, especially around in the last couple of years where we've lost some resource related to, you know, maybe ratepayer funding through the IOUs for climate planning or for the clear path tool. And so uh, I just want to, I want to say that out loud because you've, what you're saying is there's going to be opportunities for comment and listening and providing feedback that can potentially help shape programs and services in the future. Um, and so I just want folks to really hear that and make that connection that there will be opportunities to make those kinds of um, statements and share what other kinds of ideas and suggestions you might have. And uh, it'll be probably worth our while to make sure we're continuing to remind you about opportunities to, to speak up. Um, and on that topic too, I'm just wondering, Neil, like, where do you see, you know, now that, now that we've lost some resources, <laughs> but there's so many new resources coming, not so much new funding, where do you see the best opportunities for local governments that are seeking to take their climate action planning and implementation to the, to a next level? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really unfortunate that, um, local jurisdictions have, have lost funding that was, uh, and multiple sources of funding that was crucial to that planning process. I know that it's already been difficult for, for a lot of jurisdictions given the, the funding time and, and uh, staff constraints. Um, I think that this does give us a good opportunity though, um, because over the past you know, 10 to 20 years, we have a really good sense of where emissions come from and what strategies are effective, um, especially if, if you're a jurisdiction who's engaged with ICLEA and uses the clear path tool, for example, um, you know where those major sources of emissions are most, you know, uh, a lot of jurisdictions have a similar profile where uh, the majority of emissions come from, or the largest piece of emissions come from transportation and then the built environment and energy consumption. Wow. You know, so looking at how can, how can we take those actions and incorporate them into um, other planning processes that, that need to happen? Um, or how can we take action? Um, you know, planning has a role, and I think planning will continue to, to have a role. Um, but I also think that, that local governments that know where their emission sources are, um, they can take action. Um, you know, I think we, we really need to see uh, a focus on action. Um, and that's also where a lot of CARB's funding is, is, is going to be. CARB doesn't provide funding for, for the planning processes um, unless it's around a specific type of, of project that CCI funds. Um, but we do find a lot of funding for project implementation. Um, you know, so I think it's going to be a mixture of identifying projects that can give these, these benefits um, and finding specific funding for that, but also looking at, say, you know, when you're updating a general plan or a, you know, a hazard plan or some other type of plan, your housing element, how can you incorporate climate action into that, into that planning cycle so that you're reducing the cost that it takes? You're not planning twice, you're planning once and you're making it easier on everyone because you don't have to look at multiple different areas. 
Yes, thank you. Um, you know, makes me want to ask, and we don't have a lot of time for it, but you, know, you all are the ones with the repository of information to pull some insights on what's really working, um, you know, across the state on local local emission reduction strategies. Do you do you have any things you want to share with us about sort of insights that you're gleaning that we can use? Yeah, I mean, I think there's uh, there's there's a focus on um, land use, especially as it comes to reducing VMT. You know, making sure that um, housing is near transportation, um, and that not everyone needs to drive for for every single trip. Um, you know, that's a very effective strategy that that's backed by research. Um, looking at building decarbonization, um, and um, you know, so we're seeing a lot of high level strategies like that. I would also encourage folks to look at ICLE and RMI, who both have released um, sets of strategies that uh, address the majority of remissions uh, from local governments. Is there a hand raise? I think there might be. Can my team help with that? Um, Nick, Nick Peterson raised his oh, hand. Great. Hi, go ahead, Nick. Yeah, so what what's the status of, um, and this may be outside the realm of this, uh, status on having a statewide natural gas ban on new construction, all new construction, including remodeling and, and ADUs? I think each locality is sort of fighting this. Berkeley was the tip of the spear and got sued and is now going through the courts. Our little municipality is sitting back and of course our, our city attorney has said, let's wait and see why this goes through all the courts, which seems a real waste of effort. We know burning natural gas is bad and there, there should be uh, restrictions on it or, or even you know, incentives against it at a statewide level. Is anything happening uh, to, do, to do that or to help cities not have to wait till uh, you know, it all goes through courts and everything? Neil, do you yeah. want to talk about yeah, CARB's rule. Yeah, um, un unfortunately, CARB is is not in the position to make that decision ourselves. That really comes down to um, legislation and, and the CEC. Um, but CARB does, you know, we are looking at um, what does it take for existing and new construction to to be decarbonized? How, how can we have a, a decarbonized future? Um, and you know, there might be an opportunity, it sounds like if there's interest in that topic, an opportunity to dive more into the CEC's new Title 24 codes, um, where they are moving the dial towards electrification, uh, though there's not a natural gas ban embedded. And if anybody else wants to share on that topic, feel free to um, feel free. So, and while I do that, I'm actually going to transition us to the last segment, but it's, it's all discussion based and we can talk about whatever we want. The last piece of these meetings I want to do is something we're just calling ask the BPC, which means um, this is an opportunity, any thoughts that have been jogged for you or that you're just holding and in house about, uh, you know, and ways to help you advance your work. I'd like you to raise questions here. You can do it, raise your hand provide a request via the chat, or you can email me directly if you don't want to share it out loud. But um, it's one of the services that SEEK offers is to kind of be a gopher of information. And so I can um, handle requests for information or technical assistance questions. I might not be able to answer it on the spot, but I can go back and do some research and some digging and get back to you. So I'm mentioning that so that um, folks that are can think about that while we let somebody else Please raise their hand, um, get a chance to talk. So Amory, why don't you go ahead and unmute yourself? Hi everyone, this is Emery from the Association of Monterey Bay Area Governments. And something that was jogged for me, um, I think when Neil mentioned the um, high global warming potential pollutants, is in my experience, many of the jurisdictions as part of their inventories don't really include those gases. Uh, and so I was just curious, um, either from Angie's perspective or from Neil's perspective, what do you see the role of local governments in reducing those those emissions? And are there any opportunities that you're aware of that are sort of coming up for um, local governments to, to gather and do work around this issue? Neil or Christina, do you want to speak to whether CARB has any specific opportunities on... Um 
and high pollutant, uh, high emission global warming pollutants. Yeah, and I, I do want to be clear that I, you know, it's this is definitely one of those areas where it's not it's not 100% under the control of a local jurisdiction. We don't expect local jurisdictions to phase out high global warming potential, um, um, you know, substances all by themselves. Um, there has been, I believe, federal legislation that that's going to address much of that recently. Um, I think for, for the most part, you know, we just want to make sure that that can be addressed through, um, you know, appliances. Uh, if, if local jurisdictions are are looking at, say, burnout ordinances or something else that that really um, tries to make sure that the best um, the best technologies that are a fit for your jurisdiction and your your climate action plan or your greenhouse gas emission reduction targets um, make it into uh, into homes and businesses. Yeah, I'll chime in that I've been doing a little research on uh, what I'm calling constituent focused clean energy and climate assistance programs to try to create a directory. So this du duplication that a lot of local governments are doing and trying to find programs that are community facing, so private folks, residential, commercial, industrial, um, if we can uh, lift that burden a little bit, do a little bit of a, you know aggregation there. Um, and I, I just want to mention that there are CCAs and some other programs that are offering things like refrigerator recycling programs to so sort of trying to tackle refrigerants. Um, that might be something uh, to look at. And I can do a little bit more digging about how to help local governments better incorporate that. Thank you, Omri. And I can also add in that. Um, so the low income weatherization program that um, Angie mentioned at the beginning that is a CCI program that um, helps with that. And also I would look into related to that program, the solar component. Um, and so those are the two top ones that come to mind. But also if you'd like to explore other opportunities, I think that the individual audiences tab on the website, that would show you like all everything that we have for that level of granularity for you know exchanging out um, everything from farm equipment to appliances. Um, so I'd, I'd invite you to explore that and see if any of those fit with the vision that you are, um, you're trying to implement. Thank you, Christina. All right, I don't see any other hands raised or questions in the chat box, but I do wanna take an, another moment here to make a plug here because it is part of my role to play sort of a technical assistance role. And there is a whole website devoted to submitting a request for it and us posting what we've provided, uh, but it's a little quiet. So now I'm here <laughs> and making it really easy for you to just ask questions um, and try to get some answers and some information back. Anything you're working on that I can possibly dig up some information or point you in the right direction of an expert, um, this would be a one place to do it. And like I said, you can also email me some other topics that we've um, been asked about. Like right now, somebody's asking me about outdoor lighting policy, trying to you know, locate some experts, uh, electrification ordinance approaches, um, self-generation, uh, the SGIP program, just clarifying eligibility. Um, another one was energy saving performance contract guidance and um, best practices. So those are the kinds of, you know, really, pretty wide lane um, and I'd be super happy to help. And what I like about doing it in this context is that we can help each other. So I don't have all the answers, but if somebody on the line has some experience or some insight or knowledge, we can share that um, together. All right, team, uh, I see one more hand raised. Let's see, oh, Nick, do you have another comment? Yeah, I don't know if this is the appropriate time to do or should do it later. You know, it would also be real helpful. We're a small city. I think we have two staff that are one's full time, one's sort of part time on climate action issues, sustainability issues. Is there anything like a climate emergency core where you could have pre trained, you know, already trained, knowledgeable, uh, probably college grads or college students that would be able to supplement staff and do a lot of the legwork, especially for outreach and engagement? If, if they were trained in that, that would be super helpful. I mean, we have all these great ideas, but we can't implement or it takes years to implement them just because we have so little manpower to do it. 
And I'm wondering if that. Yes, yeah, Nick, thank you. Civic Spark. And I think I'll maybe mention that as a spotlight next time. Um, and let me send you some direct information. And Civic Spark is a program actually run by LGC and it provides subsidized um, entry level support. Uh, okay, I do want to be respectful of everybody's time. If we go to the last slide, um, we our next meeting will be November 9th. So we're going to do this monthly. Feel free to invite others. And if you ever think of something that you want raised here at this meeting or a speaker you'd like to invite an agency, send me uh, a request at any point in time. And we will be following up with all of our registrants with um, the recording and slides and opportunities to uh, reach out to us at any time. Thank you so much, everybody, for your engagement. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to next month. We'll see you then.